This video provides an overview of the UK academic job market. As always, being the data nerd, I digged into the data and the good news is the data is available for free. So if you feel bored during the weekend, you don't know what to do and the choice is between some data analysis and going out, here it is, here is the link to the data sources. The data is provided by HESA, so HESA is an agency that collects all the data from universities. Whenever I analyze any industry, I look at value drivers and I look at cost factors and I look at productivity measures. The main value driver for universities is student numbers and fee payments. Of course, there are alternative revenue streams and I'm happy to talk about this in other videos. Just leave a comment down below. In terms of costs, the main cost factor is staff costs. It's usually about 60 to 65 percent. Productivity is usually measured using a measure of output and input. So in the context of universities, a very common measure is to look at a staff-student ratio. The um, normal assumption would be if you can achieve more output with less input, it indicates higher productivity. However, in the case of universities, the student staff ratios are mainly used as an indicator of quality. And so the idea is to have a low number of students per academic. Now, this, of course, also limits the scope to enhance productivity. But at the end of the day, um, these student staff ratios are linked to university rankings. So if you want to progress in your ranking, which then of course affects also student recruitment, the other value driver, you have to try to keep your student staff ratio low. Let's look into the data. So what do the data actually tell us? So number one, this is now looking at the undergrad and postgrad um, taught numbers in the UK and you see for quite some time um, there is an increase in the numbers. Undergrad market is more or less stable. Also the undergrad market is more driven by domestic demand and it tends to be a little bit more stable. Postgrad numbers have increased quite sharply in this period and of course now the key question is can you actually sustain the growth rate? Now these are growth rates um, for the total student population and there are a few things you note. Number one, what you certainly note is that there are periods of negative growth. Yeah, so there's no guarantee that growth rates, of course, always are positive and increasing. And you also notice at the end of the period, you have this sharp increase in growth. The key question here to ask is, is it really that sustainable? In the long term, the growth rates are not massive. Yeah? So here we talk in the long term around 2 or 3%. Now, this is um, maybe acceptable um, if you assume that fees increase in line with inflation, but fees don't. Now, um, at the same time, the um, jobs are expanding in higher education. So these are the number for academic staff still going up and non-academic staff. For the last years, um, um, the data for non-academic staff is not yet complete, so that limits uh, this analysis. But you see a steady increase in numbers um, throughout this period. So um, you can argue that still there are employment opportunities for sure, but we will look more carefully now into um, the issues around costs, but also the issues around competition. Now, these are the student staff ratios for the whole sector. Of course, there is a significant um, variation across various institutions, but in general, you see it's going down in this period, apart from the last increase driven by a um, high intake of postgrad students. Now, um, summing up, so what are the key insights just by looking at the data? So the outlook in general is, I don't think, really fantastic. I think there are certain challenges. Now, one issue is certainly inflation and also then costs linked um, to um, contributions for pension and also um, academic salaries. 
So you have to maintain your revenue for that. You have to try to increase revenue in line at least with inflation. Now this has been possible by a significant increase in the number of students. The key issue there is, however, can you maintain very high growth rates? Honestly, I think this will be quite challenging going forward. So that, that's one source of uncertainty. We don't yet know much about what happens to fees. Um, so that's something, of course, um, one has to look into as well. But there is certainly a, a significant cost pressure. The numbers look fine. One has to be honest, but um, I'm not convinced, in particular when you look at demographic changes, that this is likely to continue. The other aspect you always have to look at is the number of PhD students. And the numbers are actually quite high. So at the moment we talk here about 114,000 students. So if you assume that about 80% of them actually complete and um, they take on average four years, so you can expect about 22,000 completed PhD students to enter the market every year. Now, not everyone, of course, will go into an academic job, but quite a few would try that. So this um, simply gives you a rough idea about the competition. Of course, the competition on top of that is also international as well. So in summary, I think the UK market is still very competitive and it's likely to stay that way. If you want to discuss any um, other issue like CVs, um, you know, requirements um, for the job market, just leave a comment below. I'm happy to make another video. I'll see you in the next one.